Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska men's basketball team officially announced the addition of guard Jaron Boogie Coleman today. Coleman joins the Huskers as a grad transfer from Ball State. He has started 86 games and totaled more than 1,100 points, 325 assists, and 450 rebounds between Ball State and Missouri. Head coach Fred Hoiberg said this on Coleman, quote, We are pleased to be able to add Jaron to our roster. He is a big point guard who has a very high basketball IQ. His skill set matches well with the other players on our roster, and he leads the team. He has led his team in three-pointers each of the last two seasons and was one of the best players in the Mid-American Conference last season, end quote. In other Husker news today, the university announced three new academic All-Americans from the spring semester. Track and field athletes Till Steinforth and Axelina Johansson and volleyball star Lexi Rodriguez were announced as new academic All-Americans. Nebraska now has a nation leading 351. In addition, the Huskers had a 95% graduation success rate, the second highest among 110 FBS public institutions. We'll hear more from Executive Associate AD for Academics, Dennis LeBlanc, later on in the show. And finally, some Major League Baseball scores, a couple of games final from earlier in the day as the Marlins defeated the Reds 5-4, the Brewers beat the Rockies 7-6 in 10 innings, and the A's prevailed over the Rangers 2-0. Just underway, the Tigers lead the Twins 2-1 in the second, the Cardinals lead the Rays 1-0 in the second, and finally, the Phillies lead the Nationals 3-0 in the first. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for a full two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. They fake the handoff. Chubba keeps it himself. Touchdown, Nebraska. What a drive for the Huskers. They take a 6 nothing lead. He's out of the pocket and shoved out of bounds. He'll lose a dozen. Yards clear back to the 34 yard line. Williams got shoved into the Husker bench. Quinn Newsom again there, DB. Dead left. Lindsay gets it through. They stayed with it. And Krause muscles it through a double Buckeye block. Michael the- Williams, Spring Lake, Texas, serves back right. Nice pass. Quick attack. Becca, Alec, big red. Kaboom. Here is your host, Jessica Cootie, on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome in, everybody. We're so glad you decided to join us here on this Wednesday night edition of Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie. Jeremiah Searles back again for The Voice. Greg Sharp, who is trekking his way across Canada. Appreciate you coming back. Are Absolutely. you? Do you have a birthday hangover today? No, not at all. I just went. I told you I crushed that entire Valentino's <laughs> dessert pizza you sent me home with last night. Didn't didn't survive the night. I told you to go share with your kids. Nope, and your kids they didn't, didn't make get it. a single. They didn't even know it existed. <laughs> they woke up this morning the same they went to bed last night. That thing never even entered the house in their minds. Oh, wow. Do you, do you feel older today? I feel older every day I wake up. <laughs> it is something else hurts my back, my ankle. You know, it's always something. Well, you got a lot of birthday texts, so I know you appreciated I that. Husker Nation love. enjoyed celebrating your birthday with you. We're glad you're back. Um, if you want to be a part of the show, send some more texts for Searles. We've got a few things lined up for the show tonight, 402-413-2400. We're going to hear from Dennis LeBlanc, as you heard Camden just say, in hour number two. Some fascinating storylines around uh, the academic staff, including one Xavier Betts, who took 21 credit hours. That's crazy. So we talked to Dennis about that and, and what all went into that. What, were the most, what was the most that you took? 17. I took 17 one year, and that was a lot. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was a heavy workload. But after that, I think I only took like 11 or 12 every year after that. But Dennis has been here so long. I mean, he, recru- I, he was here when I was getting recruited here. Yeah. Like, Dennis is the OG of OGs when it comes to Nebraska staff. You'll be fascinated to hear what he says about Coach Rule and when Coach Rule came in and, and what he wanted to implement. He's like, he made me better. And so some of those things that you've already talked mm-hmm. about uh, on the show and, and what makes you believe in Coach Rule, Dennis also echoes on a different kind of perspective because it's it's the academics. But uh, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda is also graduating this weekend. So he's another guy that had to take care of business over the spring. We talked to him about that. And a lot of cool things that we um, get into with Dennis LeBlanc. I did ask him uh, off air, not during the interview, what kind of student you were. And he's like, he's all right. Not quite as good as Ethan Piper. I mean, I was a decent <laughs> student. I, mean, I, I graduated. I mean, I made the dean's list a couple times. I was a decent student. <laughs> 
So, anyways, we'll hear that conversation coming up. Uh, it's a great conversation, cool perspective. Um, when we're talking some of the great things, it's really important to this athletics department is is taking care of business in the, in the classroom, and then some of those storylines surrounding some of the football players as well. That's coming up in hour number two. We're gonna hear from Maggie Mendelson, the two port stu, two sport star. There we go. Mm. Two sports star here at Nebraska, and she should just now be a freshman at that. She reclassified, so she's young. She should be a freshman now. What other sport would you play besides football if you're playing two sports? Track. <laughs> oh, just <laughs> eat, just eat, lift, and throw. Are throw you kidding me? Oh, shot put and discus. All you do is literally just lift to get as big as possible, and then that means you have to eat, and then uh -huh. you just go out there and throw. Did you did you do track? I did. I threw in high school. I loved it. I used to bring a little Foreman grill or like no, like a little Weber like grill. I used to bring a cooler. I to love do track, track meets. Track Absolutely. Meets? You go in chill. the morning, you throw, you qualify for finals, which is at like 4 p.m., <laughs> and then you just sit out and grill all day. It was my favorite. I loved track meets. And you get to miss school all day. Yeah, it's on a Friday. Sign me up. Hey, the throwers have been pretty good. Maybe you you might not have a spot. No, I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have made it. I mean, I was a decent throw. I took third in state my senior year or something like that but I mean I loved it I thought it was a lot of fun so all that coming up here over the next couple hours and then I also gave Cyril some uh, uh, homework assignment to do for the show tonight which we'll get into as well but before we dive into too deep into that we've seen more and more coaches administrators administrators, people that are involved with athletics speak out about this whole realignment thing. And one of the things I, I didn't get to ask you about when first it was first kind of started unfolding last week when we had you on on Friday, you were a player during when the, when the first thing really unfolded for Nebraska. What was, I, I guess you had more of a certainty of knowing what was going mm -hmm. to happen, but was it, what's going through your mind as a player throughout all that process? Because you're, you're looking at some of these players right now at Stanford and Cal that don't have a place right now, Oregon State, Washington State, and I mean, they're probably thinking, okay, I got to get in the transfer portal. Yeah, I, I don't know what you would do in this. I mean, and when I, we transferred into the Big Ten, like, yeah, we had a home. Yeah. Right? We knew we were transferring into a good conference, you know, but I think they're in scramble mode, and the transfer portal didn't exist when I played. You know, it was a true, if you transferred, you you sat out an entire right. year, right? Like you and missed, you couldn't transfer and in you conference. And you couldn't transfer in conference. I mean, so there were so many more rules back then, but... Yeah, I mean, if you're a player at one of those universities, you're probably thinking, why am I staying here? Like, maybe if you're in Stanford, you came for school. But I also know that Stanford doesn't do NIL, right? That's just something that they, like, kind of stand on as principal, so that's going to hurt them. And then some of those other schools, I mean, do you go to the Big 12? Do you go to the MAC? Like, what do you do? Do you try and just stay the Pac-12 and try and add teams to the Pac-12? And it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you saw the Big 12, they went out and grabbed – BYU and UCF and Houston and I think you'll see maybe they grab a couple Mac schools or some independents but as a player I'm probably I'm probably trying to transfer if I'm a freshman right if I'm a freshman or sophomore and I've got three four years of eligibility left I'm probably going to try and hit the eject button and try and go somewhere else I just think you know in the in these conversations we start talking about all the different things the travel and the other sports but What's it like being one of those players on those schools that don't have a spot right now? I mean, that's got to be pretty, pretty concerning for them. Uh, Chip Kelly came out and said he was talking about maybe just do two different divisions and have the teams from the Power Five, just no conferences, but those 64 teams or whatever compete for a championship, and then the other 64 of the, what is it? Group of five. Group of five mm -hmm. compete too. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you could do that, but I mean, you're you're missing out on opportunities. Those Mac schools, those other schools get to transfer or get to go and play at the Power Five level. Like, you wouldn't have that anymore. Like, yeah, you'd be better for the viewers, but I think there is something to having those small schools be able to go play against the big schools and those things. And I think you'd also see those smaller schools, the group of five schools, would suffer a little bit because guys would want to go play bigger schools. And, I mean, they're already starting to suffer because of the transfer portal. I mean, one thing we're starting to see is you'll see, like, a San Diego State, for example, they had a left tackle that was a two-star kid coming in. They developed him. He was fantastic. He was an All-American last year. Bloop, Ohio State plucks him and sticks him in there, right? So the development game at the group of five is already starting to suffer, and it's just going to continue to suffer with this realignment because all the players are going to want to go play at the big schools. So at this point now, the college football playoff has already been revamped, mm -hmm. and it's the, the Power Five Conference champions are get the automatic bid. Well, now there's no longer five Power Five conferences at this point so do you just do the four and then have the other be at large is what do you basically, do from this point yeah that's basically what you have to do I mean yeah. they're all they're scrambling again I mean the CFP has been trying to figure out the best way to do this since they started right they started with four and then everyone was the outcry of four is not enough and now they've expanded again and 
it's going to turn into kind of what the FCS playoff looks like. It's going to start in late November and go all the way through mid-January. If that's the way you're going to want to play it, kind of like the NFL, where you're going to have the two divisions that end up meeting. But it's, it's scramble mode. I don't think anyone knows the right answer, right? I don't think anyone knows the best way to do this. I don't think anyone has an idea of what it looks like because every time they try and figure it out, another realignment happens. And then they try and figure it out again, and then someone else is jumping ship. Like, until the dust really settles for two, three years, there's going to be no tr true answer for it. And to me, I, I think, too, you got to think – are they are they going to take away some some regular season games to be able to continue to add to those playoff games? No, no? never. Money, 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 <laughs> money, money. The, the networks are never going to allow you to take away games. I mean, there's yeah. only already 12, right? So you get 12 Saturdays of a fall to make and capitalize on. I mean, and think about think about a state like Nebraska. How much money does the city of Lincoln make on a home game Saturday? Right? You start taking away some of those from the like the smaller schools, the smaller markets. Like the cities depend on the falls. Yeah. Right? They fund so much of the fall to help them get through the summer when a college town, all the college kids leave, there's not a lot of business, right? And then they come back in the fall, and that's when all their business happened on Saturdays in the fall. So, you know, I don't think you'll ever see a lack of uh, – I don't think you'll ever see guys lose regular season. I think they'll just keep tacking it on longer and longer. I do think it's great with the new playoff that there are going to have some playoff sites, give some extra mm -hmm. home games to the, the schools. And so you might see somebody, like – from the SEC go up and play at Wisconsin, which would be very That'd interesting. That'd be interesting to see how they'd handle, like, tickets for that, right? Yeah. Like, if it's a home game, like, are they going to treat it like a bowl game where it's, like, 50-50 ticket split? Yeah. Or is it because it's a home game, then it's going to be treated like a home game? That'll be interesting to see how they play that out, too. All right, 402-413-2400 is that number to text or call in. I do – what is TJ? He wants to know my PR and shot and disc. Um, in shot, I was 49-6. And in disc, I was 187 and a quarter, I believe. Is that good? Average. <laughs> Not great. I think state that year won like 58, won state that year. He was really good. He went on full ride scholarship somewhere. So. Listen, you've, and you've made no bones. You're a football guy. But what uh -huh. are you going to do if your kids are all in on other sports that are not football? Love it. I'm all for it. <laughs> I hope my daughter plays volleyball. I want to be a volleyball dad so yeah, freaking do. bad. Oh, my gosh. You know how loud I can yell in a gym? Come on Oh, now. my gosh. I'm going to be that dad that 100%. <laughs> I want her to be a lefty outside hitter so bad. Oh, is she lefty? We're not sure yet. She kind of does both, right? When she colors, she uses her left with like big motion. She's right, but Emma was like that way. She would big motion right, but she's left-handed. So maybe she got a little bit of that. And then we put a golf club in my son's hands already because I was like, listen, you can play a lot longer, make a lot more money, and not kill yourself yeah. during this game. So listen to what my dad did. My, my brother, um, he's right-handed, but he shoots and throws – left-handed everything else he does right-handed because when my dad when he was growing up and he if he put a ball in his right hand my dad would take it out of his right hand and put it in his left hand i love it so my, my dad basically made him a, a left-handed pitcher and a lefty shooter my roommate in college uh she plays softball here brooke thompson she uh her dad did the same thing and turned her into a lefty yeah, yeah she was a right-handed and she ended up pitching left and hitting left so but everything else he does is completely right-handed yeah. and so I, I mean, my left hand is useless. Mine I mean, too. You, try and, you try and make me do anything left-handed. It is like I have never done it before in my life. Oh, I even, like, when I do interviews, I'm like, I got to be, I got to hold the mic probably yeah. in my right hand. Because yeah. it, like, my left hand, I just. I've gotten a little bit better since I've had kids because you have to, like, hold the kid <laughs> and be able to do things with one hand. Yeah. But, yeah, my, my left trap is nice and just from holding a baby all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to a break here. We've, we've got a fun kind of conversation discussion that we're going to get to I challenge Searles to pick the three position groups he feels the most confident in and I'm going to do the same going into the season at this point for Nebraska football and the three he's got to see before he can really instill confidence in so we're going to get to all of that here uh, over the next couple of hours plus here from Dennis LeBlanc and Maggie Middleson so again keep those texts rolling in phone calls as well the phone lines are open 402-413-2400 the Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. 
Get 3.9% financing for 66 months, plus up to $27.50 bonus cash on F-150 and F-150 Lightning. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. FNBO is the great big small bank. And for more than 165 years, we've been with you where you are. A bank that's ready for all your needs, both big and small. Here to help you earn more, save more, so you can do more every step of the way. It's what you can expect from the great big small bank. FNBO, independent and family owned for six generations and ever so focused on you. Stop on by or visit us at FNBO.com, member FDIC. Our planet, it's hungry. Blessed with millions of acres in this great nation, our farmers work tirelessly to feed the planet through seasons of uncertainty and seasons of growth. It's a tough business to do alone. As owners of Central Valley Ag, it's together that we move forward. There's room at the table. Find your seat at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Discover the meticulously crafted and effortlessly iconic 2023 Cadillac lineup at Woodhouse Cadillac. Lease a 2023 Cadillac XT4 for $4.99 a month for 36 months, 10,000 miles per year. Visit us in-store at our newest location at 112th and Dodge in Omaha or online anytime at woodhousecadillac.com. With approved credit, must have a current Cadillac lease. Down payment, $299.00 and first payment to its signing. Offer expires 731.23. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Only in Nebraska will you find a historic, record-breaking event like Nebraska Volleyball Day to honor women's athletics. The University of Nebraska Foundation invites you to be a part of Only in Nebraska, a campaign for our university's future. Another historic, record-breaking effort to engage 150,000 donors to build the future Nebraska needs right now. It's all possible, and it's all happening here, only in Nebraska. Give to support in you at onlyinnebraska.org. Meet water's bubblier and more energetic best friend, Bubbler Antioxidant Sparkling Water. With tons of flavors, there's one for every occasion. Interviewing for your dream job, hitting the beach, or going on an epic road trip? Pop the top on your favorite Bubbler flavor and awesome antioxidant swoop in to balance your body and focus your mind. Right before a boost of natural caffeine shows up to save your day, there's a benefit in every bubble and a happier you just waiting to rise up. Find out more at Drink Bubbler on Instagram. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day-by-day -day donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers athletic fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Oh, but he can't make it because he's so hot. The air conditioning is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling his favorite Luxair dealer. Trusted since 1950, with Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. There's no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland. 
and have been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbrothers.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Nebraska Athletics. Discover your next Ford with Woodhouse. The truck you've always wanted to the SUV you need, Woodhouse has the full lineup. Plus a huge selection guarantees you'll get the features that matter and at a smart price, like our current offer on a new Ford F-150. Or needing the versatility of an SUV to take on the everyday? Shop our offers going on now. Find your Ford with Woodhouse online or at one of our three convenient locations. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Welcome back to Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie, Jeremiah Searles. In for us as well tonight, let's head right to the phones. Chris in Lincoln is going to join the conversation about lefties, it sounds like. Chris, how's it going? Hi, good, Jessica. Thanks. Yeah, Jeremiah, good to hear you guys talking. I just got a kick out of your conversation about turning righties into lefties and some of those kind of things. And one of the things I've learned over the years is unbeknownst to sometimes the the instructor and the student when they're learning different techniques and things like that if if the instructor is demonstrating then oftentimes the student ends up copying but when they're facing each other it's a mirror image and sure enough they turn into a lefty when they're copying the instructor sometimes so it's a conscious effort to work with whoever you're working with to make sure that they're oriented in the same way if you don't want them to change. <laughs> but uh, that's a, and it probably is more prevalent with golf and uh, swinging a baseball bat, some of those kinds of things. But uh, it's just an interesting little quirk that can happen. You can turn somebody into a, a lefty or a righty. Absolutely with fascinating your demonstration. There you yeah. go. Searles is taking notes. So yeah, when you are right start working with your daughter, you need a mirror yep. on the other side when you want to be hard to be a lefty hitter. Yeah. Well, well maybe if she starts <laughs> maybe she starts listening better, we can start working on that because right now she just doesn't care. <laughs> oh, Chris, appreciate the call. Thank you. You betcha. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Well, um, there you go. There's some notes for you when you start if you want your kids to be lefty or righty. Um, Let's get to the homework assignment of the day. Which should we start with? We should, should we start with the most, the positions we feel the best about? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's start with that and see how far we get. We might have to save the other ones, uh, the other, the ones we need to see for the second hour. But so let's start with number one that we're most feel the best about going into the season. For me, it's the running backs. I think the running back room for me, you know, you talk about Gabe Irvin, you talk about Grant, Ramir, all guys that are proven players. I know, I know Gabe Irvin got injured early in now he's back and he kind of got his toes back in it a little bit last year but I think he can truly be the bell cow and then you have Anthony Grant that was I think he was almost a thousand yard rusher last year he was a thousand yard rusher last year right so you have a guy like that coming back then Ramir was I mean he carried the load two years ago I mean our run game was nothing without him two years ago so you have three key backs and I know we're still you and I are mourning the loss of AJ Allen that was he was our guy yes you know but I think that we still have three really good running backs that are there that can just rotate through and I'm super excited to see what they can do and I know they they feel good about the freshman they brought in um and um Oh, I just spaced his name. And then also Emmett Johnson. So the, yep. uh, the young guys, too, that I know in that, that room that they feel you, good You know about. my rule. Until you're in the two deep, you don't, know, you don't matter to me until you're in the two deep. I saw a pretty nifty play with Ramir catching it out of the back, with the, which that's a kind of another weapon, mm-hmm. a kind of different type of running back that can um, – do a little bit something else besides just hand it off and run it up the middle. Yeah, I mean, for me, I kind of look at these three guys and I'm thinking, okay, what can we compare it to? What can we look to? You know, I think back to when Wisconsin had Melvin Gordon, Monty Ball, and James White, right? They all were very good backs. I'm not saying those three guys are those three and they're going to have the NFL careers that those guys did, but they were all different featured backs. They all had different skill sets, and so you could rotate them through and really keep a defense on their heels. So I think you get those three guys in a good rotation. I mean, one will obviously be the bell cow, whoever pulls themselves away during camp, but all three of those guys I think are going to see really significant playing time throughout this year. 
All right, well, I'm going to go with the O-line just because that's what we've heard from Coach Rule, and so I'm going to follow the head coach's lead, and the running backs are only as good as their offensive line. I mean, if I've learned anything from yes, you, that's correct. what I've learned. And just the fact that, I mean, throughout my entire career of covering football, just the importance of having guys that have played on the same line together, and there's a lot of those. And I know there's some injuries, maybe not as much depth, but I think the four or five that you have, you feel really good about if they can stay healthy. So I'm just, I'm going to go with the offensive line because I've just got to stick with Coach Rule and what he said. See, those guys got to prove it to me a little bit more. And that's mm -hmm. for me, that might be the, the old lineman in me. Like, I saw too many, too many easy beats last year, too many things that were, should have, like, stick on that block a little longer, finish that guy a little better. You know, I do think that they're going to all be improved, but that, that group is a prove-it group to me that I really just need to see and watch them go out and dominate some people before I put my stamp on them. Okay, who's number two for you? Number two for me is probably our linebacking core. Yeah. You know, you talk about our linebacking core, you got Luke Reimer who's back, you got Nick Henrich who's back, you got uh, the chief, chief boarders and MJ Sherman who transferred in. Like, those four guys I think are going to be... John Bullock who just yeah, got John put Bullock, on who just got scholarship. scholarship. Yeah. Those, those, those guys are all going to be, I mean, menaces. Yeah. I think those guys will be menaces. And the way that we're going to use this three three five defense and be throwing guys, blitzing all kinds of ways, I think all those guys are going to have really productive years. Um, I also think all those guys are going to be guys that, again, like you talked about, have played a lot of ball. Right? They played a lot of football. Our two inside guys are as solid as they come, and I do think that that group is going to be the heartbeat of this defense. Think about where that sentiment now as to what we're say we were saying a year ago about not having enough depth in that room and being a little bit concerned if something were to happen to Luke or Nick, which it did, mm -hmm. and you saw some – so the defense suffer for yeah. it in the early on of the season. And a lot of guys got, I mean, with Reimer and Hendricks both not playing in the spring, they got a lot of young guys, a lot of reps, right? Those guys that are maybe not going to be huge contributors in the fall, but that's a lot of meaningful, good reps that they got with the ones and the twos because the starters were out that if for those guys do get dinged to go down, you're going to be able to put guys out there that have gotten good quality reps throughout the spring and the fall so that there hopefully isn't that big drop-off like we had last year when those guys got dinged. I thought about putting linebackers, but I was also trying to think different from what you would say. And so um, number two for me, and you are going to maybe murder me for this, but I, I think the kickers. And mm. I think because Brian Buschini is a pro and he's yes. he has a potential to really be a weapon, I feel – really good about the depth at kicker too with Timmy Bleak Road and, and we saw some flashes from him but then also the freshman Tristan Alvano I know they're very high on them and, and the competition they've had I think Tristan will probably push Timmy as well but if there comes a situation where you got to replace one or the other I think you feel good about calling on your your backup kicker and it's funny because you know again coming from the Big 12 and for so long when I was with Oklahoma you have the number one the, the top scoring offense in the country year in and year out you hardly ever saw the punter and if you're kicking field goals, that's not a good drive. And so until I got here and I realized like how critical the kickers are and f the field position and winning on a field, like knocking down field goals, I just, you know, you can say it, you can see it, and you can, under, you, you can watch it and say, oh, that's important. But until you're like embedded in it and you realize just how it can make and break a game, and I, I feel really good about the group that they put together. Yeah, I mean, until we lived what we lived two years ago where every extra point was an adventure, like, yeah, you're, you're concerned. And being in the Big Ten, the punter is one of the greatest weapons you can have. Yeah. And being able to flip a field in a really crappy weather game in, in mid-November when it's snowing and blowing and you got to just try and get two or three first downs and then kick it and pin them deep. Like, having a punter that is a weapon is so crucial, especially in the Big Ten. So I'd agree with you. I think that's a really good group that's going to help us win games this year. And Brian Buschini, I mean, Greg and I saw him out there practice. It was – he was – Booming on, but then he was also getting some some uh, what's it called the wind time, hang time. Hang time. I was like wind <laughs> time. There we go. Hang time. So it was different situation. Yep. Whatever might be needed, but he's lost some weight. He feels good. He's confident. He went to a lot of different camps over the summer and realized like. He's among the best, and he knows that, and so he's, he's a leader, too. I think he's taken a, a lot of responsibility. He's in the battle for kickoffs as well, and so I, di I didn't want to go, you know, special teams because I don't know about the return game yet, but I do feel good about the kickers and punters, so that's where I, I went there. Okay, who you got? Number three. I struggled with this one a little bit because there's a lot more question marks with the new staff and everything, but the room, I know this is going to sound interesting, but I really feel good about the tight end room. You know, I think the tight end room, you lose Travis Volkolek to the NFL. We've lost Austin Allen, right? Two guys that have been contributors and they go to the NFL. 
But you talk about a guy, Thomas Fedoni, if he can stay healthy. I mean, talking to Travis and Austin, both of the guys have told me many times this guy could be special, right? Special, special. And so I you know you talk about a guy as a true why of being able to go out there. And then you had some flashes of some guys last year, too. But I feel good about the tight end room. Yeah, that to me, I, I do, too. I think they've got uh, Nate Borkature, who's played alongside yep. In the room with Travis Volpe, yeah, Austin Allen. He's more of an F than a Y. Yeah, but I mean, you have some some depth there, and and we've heard about Fedoni, and certainly he feels healthy, and and he's had some flashes at practice. But I that's a gotta see it to me until we've heard so much about it. But I, I need to see it, and I've seen some at practice, but I need to see it in a game. I, I mean, me. if we talk about how much we want to run the football, the tight ends are going to play a big role in that, right? You're not just going to line up in eleven. If you want to run the football, you're going to put twelve personnel out there, right? One back, two tight ends, thirteen at times, one back, three tight ends and just see if you can pound the rock with big bodies in there. But if you can have a, a diverse a diverse tight end room where you can put your F and your Y and 12 personnel out there and you can run the ball, but also those guys are a threat in the pass game, that's when you really see some things we get to open up in the playbook. Which it sounds like they're going to do. I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure freaking hope so. We've had three NFL tight ends. I mean, Jack Stoll, Austin Allen, Travis Vokalek that I felt at times were very underutilized. I know Austin was Big Ten and tight end of the year, but he really didn't come on till back half of the year, right? I want to see us make the tight ends weapons in this offense. And, you know, to me, with the O-line, the progress that they made, and they, they struggled a little bit at the beginning. And when Travis Vokalek went down against Northwestern, because he was picking up a lot of the blitzes he was directing, he was helping in that, protecting Casey back there at, against Northwestern. And I think we missed him. Not only his threat to catch the football, but what he could do blocking once he went out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was uh, on the field every snap type of tight end, and that's what, that's what I hope Fedoni is. I hope he's an 11 and a 12 personnel guy. He should never come off the field unless we go five wide, and that's when I mean, you see the tight ends are becoming more and more weapons in the NFL. we got to have one here in Nebraska. This is where we differ a little bit. we got a couple of positions that he's got on the knee to see it and I've got on um, I feel good about it and, and I'm going to go with the defensive backs because there's going to and I know you love defensive uh. backs but there's a lot of them they're going to be playing a lot and I think you you feel good about Quentin Newsom, Malcolm Hartsog and then the addition of Corey Collier and some of the defensive backs that are coming back I think they've got a lot of talent a lot of depth and just starting with the corners right there the the Two that are returning from last year, I feel pretty solid about that. And I just, I know that they're they're deep, and I think they've got some. Evan Cooper came in here and ran through them, and I think he's got a lot of guys that he feels pretty good about. You know, they're got to see it for me because if you're going to have five DBs on the field, they got to tackle, and DBs are notoriously known for not wanting to tackle. And I know that. I mean, I was at a few spring practices, and I mean, Rule was talking about it. if you're not willing to come down here, stick your nose in the box, and take a running back at full speed at five yards, you can't play in this defense. Right? And so I got to see that from this, line, this DB group, that they're willing to come up and be run stoppers. They're willing to put their hat on the football and, and take the big hits and not try and side tackle or do the dummy where they just run and don't throw their arms, which drives me up the wall. But I, I got to see this DB, DB group in the fall before, I put, before I'm ready to, like... You don't like... If you... If I see one DB Put this me on year, camera. You don't like... If I see one DB this year do that after an overthrown ball or a dropped pass, uh, I will come unglued. Uh, I can't handle that. You're right, though. I mean, Rule is getting after him, though. I mean, they he's letting to. him know. So if you're going to put five of them out there, you gotta, you got to be dogs. You have to be dogs in the secondary. You can't be afraid to hit someone. All right, we're going to get into our need to see in the first segment of hour number two. So uh, stick around for that. But let us know. What do you think about our list there of our – Groups that we feel the best about going into the season so far. A little bit different there, but and uh, the Sports Lightly Hotline 402-413-2400. Brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. We're going to hear from Maggie Mendelson up next here on Sports Nightly. Our planet, it's hungry. Blessed with millions of acres in this great nation, our farmers work tirelessly to feed the planet through seasons of uncertainty and seasons of growth. It's a tough business to do alone. As owners of Central Valley Ag, it's together that we move forward. There's room at the table. Find your seat at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. 
Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. There's a new kind of season ticket when you fly from the Lincoln Airport, the official airport of the Huskers. Now at LNK, choose from fast, affordable, non-stop flights to your favorite vacation spots. All from an airport that's relaxed and hassle-free. It's never been easier to get off the bench and enjoy an adventure with the whole family. Visit GoFlyLNK.com and book your trip today. Let's go. Today we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For new Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. New Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red! It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Oh, but he can't make it because he's so hot. The air conditioning is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling his favorite Luxair dealer. Trusted since 1950, with Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. Right now, enjoy great value on outdoor power equipment from steel, from gas, power blowers, chainsaws, and more to high-performance pressure washers built to tackle the dirtiest jobs. Find yours at stihldealers.com. Welcome back to Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Goody with Jeremiah Searles. We um, had teased we were going to hear from Maggie Mendelson, but we're going to push that back to the second hour because we have a little bit of breaking news because while we've been on the air, 
Husker football has announced the first four single digit numbers. And so I know this is going to be a big deal, big tradition here at Nebraska. And we've been waiting anxiously to see what the, that looks like. And the first four have been announced. They've posted on their social media platforms. Billy Kemp going to be wearing number one. Isaac Gifford, number two. Luke Reimer, four. Jeff Sims, seven. Certainly not surprising after you've heard Coach Roll talk throughout fall camp. Could have said even before fall camp, it probably would be Luke and Jeff. But really cool and, and not surprising to see Isaac and Billy on that list either. Two transfers. Yeah. Two transfers and two Lincoln kids, right? I mean, you got two transfers of kids coming in, earning those spots, right? I think this was voted on by the team, if I'm correct, right? So you talk about two guys that came in at semester, have earned the respect of their teammates through the way they've conducted themselves on the field, the way they've conducted themselves off the field. That's a great honor for those guys to be able to come in and earn that from their, their peers. Luke was a walk-on, too, at that. Yeah. Um, you know, Luke's been a guy that he plays so hard, and I know that he played eight-man football in high school in Kansas before he moved back up to Nebraska, and, but always felt like he was good enough to play and didn't have very many offers and had a chip on his shoulder, felt like he could play here. He came here, and he, he earned his spot, and he's been the, what, two-time, three-time leading tackler? Yeah. He's two-time leading tackler going into this season, and so... So, but the leadership part of it has had to grow for him. But I think they, this staff has challenged him. And so we've really seen him step into that. And, and he was coaching up a lot of guys in the spring. And so I, really cool and so great for Isaac Gifford. I mean, Coach Rule has just raved about him on and on and on the last couple of press conferences as well as Billy Kemp. We've heard Billy Kemp's name almost every single coach that's come up to the mic. Yeah, I mean, and for Gifford, too, I mean, his brother, right, Luke, was such a staple here when he played. And then he's playing for in the NFL as an undrafted guy. He's made it, I think, four or five years now, right? So, I mean, I guarantee you his first call was to his brother, who was a team captain here. And it just goes on to show the legacy of those guys that grew up here, want to be here, will give anything to play and bleed for the Husker Red. I mean, they're going out and earning it. Last segment, we talked about the – positions we felt the best about. I, f I sh forgot to mention Isaac Gifford in that defensive backs room and, and playing safety and Rover. And it seems like his style of play fits this defense pretty well. What did you see out of that in the spring? Yeah, no, I'm super excited for him. I think he's going to be a Jojo Doman type player that's all over the field, making tackles, interceptions, blitzing. I mean, he's going to be all over the place. I mean, I don't think he's as talented as a Harrison Smith, but I think that's the kind of role he'll play like for the Vikings where he's a free safety that is down in the box or he's coming off the edge and he's truly a jack of all trades and you got to have one of those guys on your defense, right? We call them erasers, right? If there's a mistake or there's something, a guy like that can erase a bad mistake or something because he's just making a play. And I think that's the path that Gifford is on. Which we saw JoJo do a lot. A lot. Yeah. A so lot. again, Billy Kemp is one, Isaac Gifford two, Luke Reimer four, Jeff Sims is seven. I did look up because we were talking during the break. I wonder if they – picked after they announced that they were going to be the four or if those were just the numbers that were assigned we'll have to dig into that and figure out how that goes because billy kemp wore four at virginia isaac was 23 luke was 28 and jeff sims wore 10 at georgia tech so i don't i don't know how that works if they got to pick if that was just what was assigned maybe some of it has to do with special teams I mean, a little some bit of it probably has to do with the position i mean if an yeah. offensive lineman gets voted you can't have a tackle <laughs> wearing number two Come that's, on. Just, that's just zero. not how this works let's have a defensive lineman wear zero. i am not a fan of the nfl changing that defensive guys can wear any number right because forever and always as an old lineman it was like okay where's my 50 numbers there's my <laughs> linebacker where's my 20 and now you got d lineman wearing single digits you've got a linebacker that's number eight and you're like wait is that guy a linebacker is he a db like i hate the fact that they changed that so let's maybe guesstimate a couple more guys we think are going to be in that. Oh, Ty Robinson. You, I think, think, I you think, think he's going to wear a single digit? No, but I think, I mean, if, here's the thing. I don't under if they're going to vote for it's going to be, hey, the top 10 guys get to pick their numbers first, right? All the skill guys obviously are going to pick the single digits. But I do think there are probably going to be some old linemen in there or some D linemen that they'll get to pick their number, right? Yeah. And Ty Robinson's going to be number 99. Like, that's just who he is. That's yeah. what he's wore forever. Like, I think Ty Robinson will probably be in that group. Um, you know, I'm trying to think who else. I bet you, I bet you. Um, but you still got 10 numbers. Yeah. I'm trying so, to think some DBs. Um, some, you know. Maybe Hartzog. I mean, I could see Hartzog I, being in that Hartzog, group. Hartzog, Newsome. Um, I, Marcus Washington, but he just hasn't been able to, to practice as much. But and, and, I know that he's been a guy that they've really liked, and, and he's a leader, and he's, they've, he, 
really talked about how he's been in the meeting room and all that. He And he's a hard-nosed guy. I mean, you love him for yeah. the things he does that's not catching the football, yes. which earns that as well. So and, I so, and so much of this is stuff we don't see. Right. right? Yep. So much of what they're voting on is what's happened in the weight room, in summer conditioning, in the classroom, right? So much of what they're voting on here is not strictly based off their play performance. Obviously, that means a lot. But it's so much more than that when you talk about leaders on a football team. You can't just be a great player and to be a leader. You have to be able to do it in every facet of your life, right? You can't be the one that's getting in trouble off the field or missing classes or whatever it may be. You have to toe the line so well to be a leader. And obviously those four guys have shown that they can do that. And we'll probably get some more information on this. The next media availability is coming up on Friday, which you'll be in for. So we'll hear from coaches, players on Friday. So maybe we'll get some more information as that unfolds. But there you have it. Billy Kemp, Isaac Gifford, Luke Reimer, and Jeff Sims. Congratulations. That's a big deal, I know, for the staff moving forward. So, And we'll also maybe find out what, what's going on with the black shirts, too, at some yes. point. right? Got to find out. Black, black shirts will probably be more closer to week one. Right. Yep. All right, well, let's get to our uh, final break and get to our final segment here of hour number one. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Get 3.9% financing for 66 months, plus up to $27.50 bonus cash on F-150 and F-150 Lightning. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Okay, man, huddle up. Look, we're playing one of the best football teams in the country today, and quite frankly, we don't have a chance against these guys. Let's face it, we're going to get slaughtered out there. But the good news is that the Nebraska Lottery has scratch and lotto prizes that any one of us could win. Yeah! After the game, we're taking the team bus to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer to see if we can win big. Let's go! So let's get out there and lose with pride. The Nebraska Lottery. Top prize odds vary by game. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Did you know that Lincoln's water is four times more hard than what is recommended? This will shorten the life of your water heater, farm pipes through mineral buildup, and is bad for your hair, skin, and clothes. What's the solution? A water softener. Go online to jhlincoln.com to learn more about water softeners and our flexible financing offers, or call John Henry's. 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans. Kinetic now offers fast, 99% reliable internet for just $39.99 a month for 12 months. Whether you're at home, school, or work, Kinetic Internet delivers the speed you need to stream, game, and stay connected with fellow Nebraska fans around the world. Only $39.99 a month for 12 months. And just like our teams in Scarlet and Cream, no one else even comes close. Check availability at windstream.com. Kinetic Internet, proud sponsor of Husker Athletics. Terms and conditions apply. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every field welcome back to our final segment of hour number one of sports nightly jeremiah searles jessica cootie here with you tonight so um I, I had to get to this at some point tonight i watched the johnny manzel documentary don't get me started it was bonkers like i mean i was mind blown it i was, mean 
Unbelievable. Listen, all his personal stuff aside, right? I, I, I will separate the two. He had some demons. He battled the demons. The professional side of him with what he did in the NFL is not okay. It, he, he, I don't think people really need to grasp the concept of like, when you draft a quarterback in the first round, you are putting all your chips in, right? Yeah. All your chips from the GM, the owner, and every other person on that team is putting all your chips in to say, we are all in on this guy. And then when that player doesn't put the time, the effort, and just openly blows it off. Zero film. Zero film, film watched. Hours. Are you out of your mind? You're the quarterback. You are paid to know everything. <laughs> And you don't watch tape? Like, I can't believe Joe Thomas didn't rip him open. Right? If I'm Joe Thomas, I'm like, listen here, young buck, I played 10,000 consecutive snaps with 400 quarterbacks. You should get in the film room so that I'm not out here doing this for nothing. Right? He ruined guys' careers. He ruined guys' jobs just out of straight selfishness and straight out of lack of discipline. And also his agent is a clown for the <laughs> fact that he was trying to lie to teams and get him to the... I could go on and I know, on we, and we, on. We only have a few minutes I understand, in but it is an absolute <laughs> joke that that guy just pissed away one of the greatest opportunities in the world to go be an NFL quarterback. So you're not going to watch the documentary? No, I will. I will get so <laughs> upset. I've seen enough clips as it is right now. I don't need my blood pressure to rise anymore. It, I was. I was just my. I watched uh, Oklahoma play Johnny Menzel while I was at Oklahoma, and Johnny just ran all over the OU defense. Yeah. It was unbelievable. When you can you can play backyard football in college. It works. If you're that talented, Kyler Murray did it, Johnny Manziel did it. Like so many quarterbacks that were incredible in college. When you get to the NFL, it is a different world. Which is the big difference between Jalen Hurts, a guy like Jalen Hurts who could do that and not and then he got better and improved in studies a lot yeah. and, and dedicates a lot of time to his craft and doesn't just rely on his athleticism. There's a few quarterbacks like that, Lamar Jackson, yeah. uh, that actually uh, have that skill set, but don't rely on it. You can't all the time. rely on it in the NFL. Yeah. It doesn't work. The defenses are too good. The defensive players are too fast. Like, you're not going to be able to get away with it. You have to be able to scheme and think and understand what's happening in front of you at lightning type pace. And you have to know that the other 10 guys on that team are always looking to you for the answer, right? Like, hey, man, what are we doing? Like, you're at the end of the day, you're the boss, right? What everyone else said during the week is great, but right now you are the general and you are telling us what we need to do. And when you have a guy back there that isn't doing it, it's no wonder he lasted two years. It's no surprise. Yeah, and you're talking about people's livelihood. That yeah, if, I mean, if... and you, you got to go back all the way to, I mean, you got that GM fired. You got that head coach fired. You set the Browns You back got even all further. of that. Yeah. Like, all those people have families, and because of your incompetence, they got fired. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, there's some other factors to it, but at the end of the day, the quarterback is the end-all, be-all in the NFL. And because you didn't want to put the time and the effort in to go be great, you got a lot of people fired and you got a lot of people's careers that were maybe down to a couple years left on their career. It got wasted. Final minute here. Uh, we'll end it on a more positive Sorry about note. the rant. Can't handle um, it. Children of the Corn in the chat asked earlier who will be the surprise team in the NFL. So you got about 45 seconds here. I, I honestly think the surprise team to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know they went really? to the playoffs last year and I know they rattled off at the end, but I think they're going to win the South and I think they're going to be a very good contender in the AFC. You also like Cincinnati too, right? They're not a dark horse though. I mean, no. Cincinnati, no. I mean, it's going to be Cincinnati KC at the end of it, but I really think that Jacksonville is going to make a run this year. I think Trevor Lawrence is great. That defense is really good. I think they're going to be a really good football team. All right. Well, keep those questions coming. I promise I will not ask Jeremiah about Johnny Manziel in hour number two, but we still have a lot to get to, so keep it right here on Sports Nightly. And buckle up and put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back with more from Sports Nightly coming up right after this. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. There's a new kind of season ticket when you fly from the Lincoln Airport, the official airport of the Huskers. Now at LNK, choose from fast, affordable, non-stop flights to your favorite vacation spots. All from an airport that's relaxed and hassle-free. It's never been easier to get off the bench and enjoy an adventure with the whole family. 
Visit GoFlyLNK.com and book your trip today. Let's go. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Okay, man, huddle up. Look, we're playing one of the best football teams in the country today, and quite frankly, we don't have a chance against these guys. Let's face it, we're going to get slaughtered out there. But the good news is that the Nebraska lottery has scratch and lotto prizes that any one of us could win. Yeah! After the game, we're taking the team bus to the nearest Nebraska lottery retailer to see if we can win big. Let's go! So let's get out there and lose with pride. The Nebraska lottery. Top prize odds vary by game.
Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska men's basketball team officially announced the addition of guard Jaron Boogie Coleman today. Coleman joins the Huskers as a grad transfer from Ball State. He has started 86 games and totaled more than 1,100 points, 325 assists, and 450 rebounds between both Ball State and Missouri. Head coach Fred Hoiberg said this on Coleman, quote, We are very pleased to to be able to add Jaron to our roster. He is a big point guard who has a very high basketball IQ. His skill set matches well with the other players on our roster. He led his team in three-pointers each of the last two seasons and was one of the best players in the Mid-American Conference last season." End quote. In other Husker news, today, the university announced three new academic All-Americans from the spring semester. Track and field athletes Till Steinforth and Axelina Johansson and volleyball star Lexi Rodriguez were named academic All-Americans. Nebraska now has a nation leading 351. In addition, the Huskers had a 95% graduation success rate, the second highest among 110 FBS public institutions. We will hear from Executive Associate AD for Academics, Dennis LeBlanc, later on this hour. And finally, some Major League Baseball scores, a couple of games final from earlier in the day, as the Marlins defeated the Reds 5-4, the Brewers beat the Rockies 7-6 in 10 innings, and the A's prevailed over the Rangers 2-0. Currently, the Tigers lead the Twins 4-3 in the 4th, the Phillies are all over the Nationals 6-0 in the 5th, Cardinals lead the Rays 5-3 in the 5th, and finally the Astros lead the Orioles 3-0 in the 3rd. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. They fake the handoff, Chubba keeps it himself, touchdown, Nebraska, what a drive for the Huskers, they take a 6-0 lead. He's out of the pocket and shoved out of bounds, he'll lose a dozen yards, clear back to the 34-yard line, Williams got shoved into the Husker bench, Quinn Newsom again there, DB. Dead left, Lindsay gets it through, they stay with it. And Krause muscles it through a double Buckeye block. And the Williams, Spring Lake, Texas serves back right. Nice pass, quick attack. Becca, Alec, big red, kaboom. Here is your host, Jessica Cooty, on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome back. Hour number two of Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie. Jeremiah Searles has cooled off during the break after I got yeah. him fired up about Johnny Manziel. It's just, it's just, I can't, <laughs> I can't handle incompetent people. I just can't do it. All right. Well, we pushed this off because we had some of the breaking news with the single digit numbers in hour number one. So let's get to our interview with Maggie Mendelson, the two sports star, Nebraska volleyball and basketball. Had a chance to chat with her the other day at Volleyball Media Day. Okay, well, how's it feel to get the uniform back on and you guys are about to start uh, fall camp again? It's, I'm so excited. Last year, it was kind of just happened so fast, and this year I feel like I'm really ready for fall camp and be here with my teammates. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's such a whirlwind, and you're balancing two sports, so how much different does it feel going into this year than it did a year ago this time? I feel way more prepared. Last year, I just got done with my summer basketball, and I was like, okay, two days of volleyball, and then we start fall camp. So this year, I've been working with volleyball, went to Brazil, and now I'm really excited and feel more prepared to go in this year's fall camp. Both coaching staffs have said that it, you've learned how to manage both. So how have, what's gone into that? Because you felt like you played it all your whole life, but it's been so different, I'm sure, at, at the college level. So what's gone into just figuring out how to manage it all? I think it's just definitely experience from everybody involved because, like, the pace is different for me. Like, learning their plays, learning the systems for both sports is a lot different. And then them just learning how to balance my schedule, like, tell me when I need to push harder, when I need to pull back, and really just helping me figure things out. And I think just one year of experience has really helped us, like, get under our belt and really know what's going on. How would you describe your freshman year? Crazy lit movie, I guess. <laughs> it was awesome. I wouldn't change a thing about it. It was definitely a little bit more hectic than I was expecting, but I think it's a really good learning experience, and I really learned a little bit more about myself through the whole experience. Was there anything you could take away from playing basketball and, and being through, going through that season that you can now feel like you can apply even to the volleyball season? I think during volleyball season, I was just like, let it happen to me. But during basketball, like I really just remembered that like you've got to go get it. And I think 
a big thing about basketball is physicality, and I'm really excited to bring that into this volleyball season. Nice. Uh, how do you feel like your game grew? Let's, let's talk volleyball now. Um, how do you feel like your game progressed just a year being here at Nebraska? I think it's I'm a completely different player. As when I got here, I'm a lot stronger, I'm a lot faster, and I know the game a little bit better, and well, a lot more, a lot better. And the coaches have just really helped me become a smarter player and smarter person. So I'm excited. Do you feel like because for so long you're so talented that maybe you just kind of relied on talent? Now you've had to figure out how to apply some, I guess, some practice some technique a little bit more than maybe you had in the past? I mean, I've always been the bigger, stronger girl, and so coming into college, even the playing field, and I had really good coaches growing up too, but coming in here, learning the college level, learning how, like the new Nebraska systems, I think it's been really helpful, and I'm so excited. What were some of the biggest things you learned as a freshman volleyball player? Um, just to be adaptable. Like last year, I played right side in some games, and I really just was ready for anything. And I think this year is going to be the same thing. Just be adaptable with the coaching, with their feet, like giving you a feedback on, and just really be coachable. This volleyball team seems really close. Like you guys are having a lot of fun. There's no seniors, but how has that been kind of developing the chemistry and the relationships with this group? I think we've all known each other for a really long time. Besides, like our freshmen, like I knew them playing USA volleyball, and I think just really knowing everybody and building a deeper connection is really going to help us. On the court because if we know each other what well, everybody's going to be doing exactly when they're going to do it like we're unbeatable it's funny coach hook went to the big 10 media days and was saying you're still the youngest player on the team i know because you you reclassified but how crazy is that that you're still the youngest and that you guys still don't have a senior but yeah i know you have some good leaders um i'm actually not the youngest coach was a little bit he's wrong. yes he was wrong and he's younger than me okay. so we're about a month apart but i think we're Everybody is going to say that we're super young, but I don't think that's true. I mean, we've been playing volleyball for however long we've been playing each, and collectively, like, we've got a lot of experience under our belt. And so I'm just really excited to really get after it this season and show the world what we can do at such an experienced young age. I love that. Did you let Coach Cook know, you and Andy, that, hey, he got this wrong, he got this that wrong? I'm just going to let him think I'm younger. It's <laughs> bonus points for me, right? <laughs> What about just competing? I mean, this coaching staff has said at every position, there's a lot of depth and going to be a lot of competition throughout camp. What's your approach to, to attacking this thing? Um, just really being aggressive with it. Like, I know my teammates are really good, and I know the competitiveness in this gym is going to be really well, but I thrive on competitiveness, and I'm just excited to get in here and show the coaches what I can do and how much I've improved since last season. What has gone into this offseason for you? Um, I've been hitting the weight room pretty hard. I know, like, Coach and me really talked about it and getting stronger for basketball and volleyball season, and I've gotten my maxes up, and I'm really excited to show what that's going to go into on the volleyball court. Is that a different balance, knowing what you need to do in the weight room for each sport, or do they kind of correlate? Um, it's definitely a little bit different. I would say basketball is definitely a bigger physical sport, but my weight coaches on both sides have really like done a really good job of putting me in a program that will help me for both. A lot of speed, a lot of jumping, a lot of athletic stuff. Do so you feel stronger, though, going into this year? Stronger and faster. I'm really excited. I love it. Well, best of luck. Appreciate your time. Thank you. She is such a sweetheart, such a nice person. I always love uh, chatting with her. It's not easy what she's doing for either. It's not easy just to play one of those sports, but to do them together and to balance it. And I, I think it was a little bit overwhelming for her that as a freshman and thinks she should have been a senior in high school last year doing it. And so I think she feels a lot in a better spot going into this year of understanding the the demands of both sports. I mean, I would worry about burnout. I mean, I used to, you, you need an off season. Like you grind mentally and physically so hard during your season. Like you need that time to let your body kind of regroup and to run right into a completely different type of conditioning, completely different type of training, all of that. It's going to be hard on her body, but mad props to her because there's no way in hell I could have done it. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, maybe eventually she'll she'll pick one. We'll see. I know that's been a little bit of the consensus from both staffs, but we'll, we'll see how this year goes, and uh, maybe we'll have a clearer picture of. But I think she, she could have a potential to help out both teams this year now that she's uh, got a year under her belt. All right, so in hour number one, Jeremiah and I dove into which position groups we feel the best about going into the season at this point throughout fall camp. So I, we had three, we picked our top three, and now we're getting going to get into the three we need to see. Not that it's negative, not that we have questions, but do we just need to see what they're going to do on the field. So let's dive in. We might have the three same on this one. We had three different ones. Right. But we might have the three same on this one. You start. You start on this one. I started last time. Okay. Well, I, I think we were both going to agree on this one, defensive line. Yep. We have dove into that multiple times throughout the spring when we were out there with Ty Robinson being hurt. I think they've got some good players. I just don't know if they have enough, right, and yeah. how they're going to rotate and if there's injuries, which 
it's inevitable. Inevitable. You're going to have injuries at some point, somewhere on a football team. And I just, I don't know if they they have a lot of young talent. And how are they going to react when it's the lights are on in the Big Ten? I need to see that. And then also just again that rotation, how the depth there at, at that spot. Yeah, the depth is a big question for me. I mean, last year Ty Robinson was so dominant for the first two and a half, three quarters, but then he just ran out of gas because he couldn't get spelled, right? You couldn't take him off the field or else bad things were going to happen, right? And then Colton Feast is now gone. I know Nash has stepped in big way in the nose guard position, but you need to have six or seven D linemen you can rotate through. It's not like old linemen where you just want to throw five out there and leave them out there. You want to have fresh bodies. You want to have fresh legs in there so that they don't get wore out, they don't get beat up, so that when you need them in the fourth quarter on a big stop, when you need to get the ball back to go, you, those guys are fresh and ready to go, and they're not dragging. So the depth of that room concerns me a little bit, but you know you have some proven players out there that are going to have to step up in a big way. Will this look different, what the D-line looks like from week to week with this defense? I think so. You know, I'm not sure. You know, I think that their base defense obviously is going to be that three-down front look. But I do think there'll be a lot of times they shift over and bring four D linemen onto the field and maybe a bigger personnel set. Or, you know, obviously if it's a th third and short or a short yardage goal line, you'll bring five or six out onto the field. But I do think it's going to rotate very much on who we play, right? I think if we're playing Ohio State and they're going to air it all out, we'll probably have three D linemen. You're playing a team like Iowa or Minnesota that's going to line up with big personnel. You're going to match their personnel with big bodies. So I do think it's going to shift around, but you still, we have some really unproven players out there. Yeah, and, but you, we talked a little bit about Minnesota. I mean, they're going to have a tough test right out of the gate for that defensive line going up to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Minnesota is going to run the ball. It's no secret. They're, they're, not, they're not hiding any of their cards. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to stick with it. Two, to me, is wide receiver. And I know that this is going to be an offense that's going to run, run the dang ball and run the dang ball a lot. But there are going to be times that you've got to be able to throw it and air mm -hmm. it out. And just with, um, you know, I know we've heard a lot about Billy Kemp. And I saw Xavier Betts make some, some pretty good plays out of practice. The other day he's out now. Marcus Washington has been banged up. He doesn't, he's not necessarily a burner, you know. He's a guy that you can maybe be a security blanket on third down. And as you've talked a lot about the things that he does when he's not catching the football. But... I uh, need to see a couple of guys emerge from that group and really be some playmakers. I need to see someone that can take the top off the defense. Yeah. Right. I mean, Trey Palmer was so good at that last year of stretching the field, making those safeties not be able to sit on those intermediate routes of the crossing routes, the hook curls. I know they had to respect that if they got caught with their eyes in the backfield for flat-footed, like Trey was just going to run right by him. I'm not sure we have that guy. And maybe we do, and I just haven't seen him yet. You know, But we need to have a guy that's able to stretch the field vertically out of that wide receiver room. I think Billy Kemp's going to be a great addition in the slot. He's super shifty, kind of a Cole Beasley type player um, that's played in the league for a long time. But yeah, that wide receiver room is going to be interesting. I mean, they got a young coach who's hungry to get after and get going, but we need to see some proven guys step up in big ways early in the season. They get some different types of receivers, but again, just who's going to step up and, and be that guy? Who's two for you? I mean, oh, sorry, the, you? The, the two, two for me was also receivers. Okay. You know? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lump two with two receivers and quarterbacks. Right, I'm going to say receivers and quarterbacks because they, those go hand in hand, right? I mean, Jeff Sims obviously played a lot of Georgia Tech, but who did he develop chemistry with? Right, that's a big piece of your receivers. Who do you trust, right? Who in a, in a clutch moment, in a third and got to have it game on the line, who are you going to, right? Who's your player that you've developed? You know where he's going to be. You know he's going to run the right route. You know he's going to be able to convert that route when it's against a certain coverage and whatnot. I need to see those guys come in chemistry, and I need to see Jeff Sims be a little bit more accurate with the football. You know, I think he was a 57% completion rate at Georgia Tech. He threw a lot of interceptions. You can't turn the ball over in this league. You just can't do it. You've got to make good throws, keep the ball alive. I need to see him be better with the football this year in the air. He's a great runner, but he's got to clean it up in the pass game. Same. I had quarterbacks as well. We know what he can do with his feet, and it's going to be absolutely electric, but got to be consistent when he's throwing the football because you can't just run it all the time. No. You're going to have to throw it. And so uh, can he make those those throws when when needed? And also... He's, he's been banged up at times throughout his career. And so if, if that were to happen again, also question mark for me is Chubba Purdy or Heinrich Harburg, the backup. Are yeah. they going to be able to come in and sustain an offense and be able to run this offense too? Like, you know, because look at, look at last year when Casey Thompson goes down and this offense really sputtered. And so it's not only about Jeff Sims and some of the things I need to see from him. It's also about his backup. For sure. And, you know, I think, I mean, fair or not, I think Henrik's going to get the – uh, the nod at two just because they're similar play styles, right? You don't want to have a completely polar opposite quarterback as your backup that if something gets hurt, you have to change the way you call plays and they'll change the way you call games. You want to have a guy that can be very similar, right? 
I mean, you see it all the time why certain vets in the league that are backups bounce team to team to team, right? You had Geno Smith that was behind Russell because they were similar, right? You weren't going to have a mobile runaround quarterback back up Tom Brady. Yeah. Right? Like, you, you just don't do that. You try and match your backup quarterback with your starters so that things can move smoothly if they do get dinged. So I think with the mobility that he has, I think he probably gets the nod over Purdy just because Purdy's more of a pocket, stand back there and throw it type of guy. But at the same time, Purdy's a proven veteran who's played some football too. He's got some pretty good legs too. We saw yeah, them. They're okay. Okay. Who's your final one? DBs. Yeah. I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay with the DB train just because, again, I'll, I'll echo what I said in the first hour. If you're going to put five of them on the field – they got to cover a lot of ground and they got to be willing to go hit people, right? You got to be willing to put up there and run defense because it's the Big Ten. This isn't the Big 12. You're not going to drop back and pass coverage 60 times a game, right? You're going to have to really get up there and force runs back into your linebackers, know your leverage, know where you have to be, know your run fits on all those schemes, and then you have to be able to pull the trigger and get a guy on the ground, right? I mean, we always, as an offensive line, we we're always like, hey, let's force it to the DBs, right? That was kind of always the, the hey, block up the box, let's make a DB tackle. And with that, the philosophy that we have in the 3-3-5, those DBs are going to have to make a lot of tackles. I do think this year we'll probably see a DB being a leading tackler on this team just because of how much they're going to be asked to do. All right. We got to get to our first break here of our number two. Let us know what you think about our positions, our ones we need to see, and the ones we feel the best about. Hit us up on the Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. 402-413-2400. We're back with Dennis LeBlanc coming up right after this. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Hy-Vee makes grocery shopping easy with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. Just order online, schedule a pickup or delivery time, then leave the shopping to us. Download the Hy-Vee app or go to hyveealesonline.com. It's easy to create and save grocery lists, shop the sales, and get fuel savers. Plus, with Hy-Vee Aisles Online, pickup is free on orders over $24.95, and delivery is free with the Hy-Vee Plus membership. Save time, shop online with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. Only in Nebraska will you find a historic, record-breaking event like Nebraska Volleyball Day to honor women's athletics. The University of Nebraska Foundation invites you to be a part of Only in Nebraska, a campaign for our university's future. Another historic, record-breaking effort to engage 150,000 donors to build the future Nebraska needs right now. It's all possible, and it's all happening here, Only in Nebraska. Give to support in you at onlyinnebraska.org. Today we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lemon hey. and Lime. Hello. For new Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop hip. Works for me. New Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Spot less. Introducing the cleanup for tar spot, gray leaf spot, southern rust, and more. Novel next generation at Astrio fungicide broadens your spectrum and strengthens your residual when it comes to foliar disease control in corn. Visit your FMC retailer or at astrio.ag.fmc.com to clean up this season. Follow 2WE for tar spot management in corn. Valid until 131.28. Always read and follow all label directions. Hy-Vee makes grocery shopping easy with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. 
Just order online, schedule a pickup or delivery time, then leave the shopping to us. Download the Hy-V app or go to hyvialsonline.com. It's easy to create and save grocery lists, shop the sales, and get fuel savers. Plus, with Hy-V Isles Online, pickup is free on orders over $24.95, and delivery is free with the Hy-V Plus membership. Save time, shop online with Hy-V Isles Online. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road Townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red! Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raised local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. I'm Jessica Cootie and excited to be joined by Dennis LeBlanc, Executive Associate AD in charge of academics. We were chatting the other day at fall camp at practice. You were out there checking out practice and you asked me what year it was for me. What year is it for you now? Well, I just finished my 40th year last Friday. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. That's a long time. That is a long time. Well, you're coming off a monumental year in the classroom for Husker student athletes. We've seen a lot of the highlights throughout social media, but can you run through some uh, some of those and, and what specifically were the real high points for right. this academics department? Right. Yeah. And first off, just a hats off to our coaches because they do a great job of recruiting individuals who want to be great in their sport and also in the classroom. So I really appreciate what they do. But yeah, Nebraska continues to lead the nation in academic All-Americans. That's something, of course, our entire state is very proud of. Uh, Le Lexi Rodriguez was named a third-team academic All-American in the fall. Uh, Axelina Johansson, second team in the spring. And then Till Steinforth was a first-team academic All-American, which is amazing to accomplish that. Three great athletes, yeah. three great students. So that, that's something I know everybody is very proud of. You had several teams that hit record GPAs as well, right, in the spring? Yeah, so, and again, it's a long list, but baseball, men's basketball, football, women's cross country, women's golf, and softball all had the highest grade point averages. And we've tracked those clear back to the early 90s. Wow. So very impressive. And overall for the whole st cumulative student-athlete GPA, it was the highest too, right? It was. Yeah, so 3.370. To give you an idea, that's like a B plus average. Yeah. For 600 individuals who are putting in hours and hours in their sport, and it just gives you a little bit of an idea what kind of the people they are away from their sport. Very dedicated. Yeah, what goes into that when it's because you can have your certain sports that always year in and year out are going to be stellar in the classroom, but for an entire athletics department to take that step up, what's what's gone yeah, into that? Yeah, so you know, first is the commitment from you know the administration to want to have all the things in place. So, you know, we have laptop computers. Obviously, we're going to be moving into the new facility, which is very exciting. And then um, just the culture amongst the coaches to be able to provide the accountability and then recruiting great athletes. I mean, just for example, um, you know, take football. And um, I, again, being here for 40 years, I've worked with seven different head football coaches, which were all amazing individuals. But I said, I, I really can't 
thank Coach Rule enough for, for the accountability and leadership he provided for that team. You take into consideration there were 109 guys on the team in the spring. 83 of them had better than a 3.0 GPA. Wow. I would challenge anybody to go on a campus and pull 109 students off and find that, let alone a team that's going through you know, the rigors of a spring, right. spring ball and mat drills and all those things that they did. And so individuals, 62% of the team had their uh, individuals had their highest GPA ever. Wow. And so it's a real, it's a real tribute to the academic staff um, and, and leaving me out of that, but the people that work with me and then also Coach Rule and the entire football staff. When you when he first gets here and you have conversations with him, what was that? What did that look like? Did you know the kind of accountability that was about to happen with Coach Rule? Well, what, what I've told what I've told my wife is Coach Rule made me better, <laughs> because you know there were things that he wanted, and he each week we provided a 36-page report wow. that had the, the the every grade for every player, and so there were a lot there was a lot of work of individuals back in our office to gather that information. But the guys knew every single week. I was going to be meeting with Coach Rule and the staff, and then Coach Rule held everybody accountable in the room, you know, to to work with their student athletes. And so it's been it's been really fun. That's what to me college sports brings out the best. And in, in these individuals come to to do a sport, but they're getting an education and they're going on to do you know, great things like many of our athletes have done. Yeah, and, and he and his staff have said that, that it's more about just being a, a football player. But we've, we've heard so often from this coaching staff about the buy-in. You have a different perspective. What kind of, I mean, I think oh. you could see it in the GPAs, but what kind of buy-in have you seen from his players into what he's trying to implement here? Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many times, and I know I've heard it on your show, where individuals have said, wow, this staff is really great for me. Mm -hmm. And... You know, so it's really cool because they're they're not just great for them in their in their sport, but they're telling me that in the academic world and also, um, you know, j just how they are as a person. And he and and you know, so it it's real stuff. And I I'm seeing it firsthand. I mean, when I'm seeing an individual like um, Anthony Grant, who is 12 hours away from graduation, and all the things that he's gone through in his life with his family. And um, to know he's 12 hours away, that he did an internship this su summer for the Center for People in Need. And in calling out and visiting with them, they just said, oh, we love Anthony. And, and we know Anthony is a bruising eye, uh, running back. I was going to say eye back there. A bru <laughs> bruising running back on our football team. But the guy is, you know, has really done a great job. And then, you know, a, a number of other guys doing internships as well. Yeah, I heard Brian Bushini was doing one. And then Omar Brown, I chatted with him this summer, and he was just so excited. He was just so, so full of joy talking about what he was doing in his internship. And then I saw Anthony Grant out in his internship, and he just was, what, what do you need me to do? What can I do? And you said that all the people that you're visiting with have just been yeah. raving about the, the work that these guys have done. Right. We had, you know, at the rec center here in town, um, at the Center for People in Need, also um, at the Malone Center, you know, so these the kids love athletes. I mean, they just, you know, so and they do a great job with them. Well, let's stick to talking about uh, some individuals because one of the big storylines over the last spring was Xavier Betts and the workload that he took on to be able to be eligible to get back out on the football field. What was your perspective of that? Because he gave a lot of credit to the academic staff and then helping him through that. Yeah, so Andrea Einspar and William Kane, who work in our office, worked very closely with Xavier. And, um, you know, Xavier would probably tell you that I wasn't his, one of his favorite people all, all the way, but, but I think he knows that we really care about him. Mm -hmm. And what he did was amazing. What he did was what we knew he could do. Um, he was able, because the university now has a January term, he was able to enroll in 21 credit hours in the spring, and he passed 21 credit hours. And then he, he's taken additional credits this summer. So... Um, he will now, as we enter the fall semester, you know, because he had a semester what, where he wasn't in school, he'll be at the point where we wanted him to be to back on track to be able to, to graduate with his, with his class. Another great story, too, is Isaiah Garcia Castaneda and him coming back to the football team. And he's graduating this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so Isaiah, you know, in the spring when he had decided to put his name in the portal, him and I talked a little bit. And then he went that route and then decided to come back. And again, Coach Rule invited him back on the team. 
and um, he took a, a heavy load in the spring and then wrapped up his internship at the Malone Center this summer. Wow. So he'll be graduating on Saturday. R really exciting. How much have you seen appreciation from him to have that degree, but to be playing football again, all um, of the above? Yeah, I, I, I think that he understands. I mean, I think that even how much he's grown just from last fall to where he is now, I mean, I think he, he realizes that he's more than a football player and that Nebraska is a great place for him to be able to accomplish everything that he wants to do. So we'll have 17 guys on, on the team in the fall who will be competing as college graduates. Not scheduled to graduate, but they'll, they'll already be done. Wow, that's so, yeah. awesome. Um, another team that I wanted to um, really solo out, because we had Coach Hoiberg on before they went mm -hmm. to their overseas trip, and boy, he was just so excited about the progress that his team made in the classroom. And they were up for an individual team award at the night of the lead. I mean, right. how impressive were, were, was that group in the classroom this past year? Yeah, so basketball had nearly a 3.2 cumulative GPA for their entire team, just under that, and it was the highest ever. Just a real tribute to the type of individual, again, that Coach Hoiberg has recruited. And then, again, you know, everybody's dream is to go on and play professional sports, and that's the case with basketball as well. So uh, with those guys performing at that level, yeah, it's really exciting. Well, we've, we've talked a lot. We've had a firsthand view, so we've talked a lot about the progress of this building right over here to our left, and it's coming along. You have a space in there for you and your team about what that looks like for you guys and how it's going to continue to help student athletes achieve their academic goals. Yeah, so when, when that building was looked at, you know, I was, they asked me, would you like to just stay over in West Stadium? And my first question is always, where will the food be? <laughs> and so that it's, it's really important. And so when you walk in, the training table will be to the right, the academic area to the left. And then, of course, the football coaches will be above us in the weight room below us. And right out the front door, you're on campus. And so it's going to be amazing. Um, I, I've had a chance to walk through it a couple times, and I've had it just recently hired a couple new staff members, one that came from another Big Ten school that I won't mention. But, you know, this individual was blown away by what we're going to have. So it'll include a lot more study rooms for the athletes. That's something they asked for. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a little bit different than what we have now where we got a, more of a walkthrough, and that was important at that time. But now this will be more like walking into a library setting um, where you'll have study rooms that you can go to and then there will be some open areas as well. Okay, so it takes a team for you guys to do what you do over there in the academic center. So tell us about the rest of your staff. Yeah, so I have an amazing team and, and we've been together, most of us, for a long time. Kim and Katie, Kim, uh, Kim Shellpepper and Katie Jewell are the associate directors of our program and they've been both with me for more than 20 years. Um, and then Alvin Banks, Caleb Hawley, Mike Neiman, Sherry Hastings, and I mentioned William Kane and Andrea and Ispar, um, and then Leah Huber. Leah is our administrative assistant who basically runs the office and a uh, very important person. And, and recently had a chance to hire two new staff members uh, into our area, and uh, we have two assistant academic counselors, and they all do a wonderful job. All right, got the most challenging question of the day for you. We had this huge discussion on the show. Is it Creek? Is it Crick? Creek. <laughs> Creek. There's the academics guy. He said it. No, I, I'm just a small town <laughs> Kansas guy, so I'm sure it's not right. My kids laugh at me a lot, my own children of how I pronounce words, so I wouldn't go by what I say. You all have been taking a survey, I, I take it. Yes, we get, we've get. we gotten texts in, we've gotten emails in, so um, I just had to make sure I asked, asked this, the academics guy what, what his opinion was. Yeah. Did we cover it all? I think we did. I think we covered everything. Awesome. Well, uh, congratulations on a great year and looking forward to another one. This is always an exciting time. This is the start uh, of our year, right? I mean, it, it's rolling. We had a soccer exhibition game. It's, it's time to kick off this new yeah, year. It, it, and, it, and, you know, there's nothing better than that, that feel of the fall, you know, as we're heading into this. Yeah. Do you feel some momentum? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, I've, I've been here for a long time. I've been here during great times in Nebraska athletics. And it's always been great to me because, you know, we're, we're uh, developing the next round of Husker athletes. But, but, you know, there's really something special that you can feel now. And it's, you know, it's, it's really neat for me also to see a, a guy like Trev back here leading our department because individuals like 
Keith and I actually met with Trev on his recruiting visit. We <laughs> joke now that he's our boss, you know. But, you know, he's doing an amazing job. Would yeah. you ever thought he was going to come back and be your boss? You know, at the time that he was playing ball, I knew that he was going to do great things. Uh -huh. We knew that. Um, but, and then after he ended up at Omaha, I guess there was always kind of that hope that he would be. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really fun and, and neat. Awesome. Well, great stuff, as always. Dennis LeBlanc, appreciate your time. My pleasure. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back with more on Sports Nightly coming up right after this. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road Townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red! f and Free Checking is checking that's actually free. No fees or minimums, and now no overdraft fees. It's ever so personal, with people to help every step of the way. And easy, with a mobile app that allows you to deposit checks and manage your account wherever you are. So make the switch so you can do more with the Great Big Small Bank. Visit fnbo.com to learn more or stop on by. f and Free Checking. It's ever so free. Member FDIC. Spot less. Introducing the cleanup for tar spot, gray leaf spot, southern rust, and more. Novel next generation at Astrio fungicide broadens your spectrum and strengthens your residual when it comes to foliar disease control in corn. Visit your FMC retailer or at astrio.ag.fmc.com to clean up this season. Follow 2WE for tar spot management in corn. Valid until 131.28. Always read and follow all label directions. Do you need to relocate to a different city or state but don't know where to start? If so, put the power of BHA Real Estate to work for you. BHA will set you up with the best real estate agent in your new town. Have a house to sell first? No problem. They can assist you with that as well. With over 70 years of experience, BHA has a network to ensure one of the biggest transactions in life will be handled with care that you deserve and the service that you can trust. Give BHA Real Estate a call today for all your relocation needs. 308-324-5581. Hey, Husker fans. Kinetic now offers fast, 99% reliable internet for just $39.99 a month for 12 months. Whether you're at home, school, or work, Kinetic Internet delivers the speed you need to stream, game, and stay connected with fellow Nebraska fans around the world. Only $39.99 a month for 12 months. And just like our teams in Scarlet and Cream, no one else even comes close. Check availability at windstream.com. Kinetic Internet, proud sponsor of Husker Athletics. Terms and conditions apply. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, 
Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Huskers head to halftime. Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Oh, but he can't make it because he's so hot. The air conditioning is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling his favorite Luxair dealer. Trusted since 1950, with Luxair you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road Townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red! Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Welcome back. Final couple segments of Sports Nightly here on this Wednesday evening. Jessica Cootie, Jeremiah Searles. We just uh, took a stroll around and practice is just about to get underway. You love some night practice. Oh, I love it. A little under the lights, you know, everyone's a little more extra juiced. You take your pre workout at 7.45, <laughs> so you know you're not going to sleep at night, so you might as well just leave it all out there. We did do some investigating. We ran into Billy Kemp on his way out to the field and asked him, so he picked number one. So they have zero through nine, so there's ten numbers, and the first four that got voted on got to pick which numbers they wanted, and then I was told that they'll vote on the next three coming up here soon and then maybe save the last three, so it's uh, going to be in a, um, you know, progression or whatever and then they got to pick which number they wanted between zero and nine yeah. right so yes yeah, so that's why it the makes sense there was seven the, yep. one two, two and four four yep. yep and so zero is still out there and then the other number so we'll maybe find out the next round next week who knows but um yeah cool uh, cool for those guys and um it was really just it's crazy to me because i've been going out there in the mornings to see them all mm -hmm. run out there they're stretching and going through the warm-ups right now for a night practice their music's too loud i don't know if, i don't know maybe <laughs> i'm old, just old or old what man. but it's just it's so loud old man I just can't do it i uh, did want to ask you a few things about uh dennis leblanc i mean because mm. he's been here been around a long time and is uh, really important to this athletics department no i mean he's the scariest, nicest man of all time. Because if you're on Dennis's good side, he will go to bat for you and help you in any way you can. You mess around and get on Dennis's bad side, you're not in a good place. Because he does not care about going to the coaches. He does not care about whatever he has to do to hold you accountable to make sure that you graduate and you do what you have to do to get that degree. He's going to do it. And I have a lot of respect for Dennis. He helped me a ton. He's been here. Like I said, he's the OG of OGs. He's been here for 40 years, I think. And so he's seen different regimes come and go. He's seen facilities come and go. But he's just so dedicated to helping student athletes of, from not just football, but every student athlete that walks through these doors fulfill getting that education, getting to graduating, and being able to move on to the next steps in life. How about what he said about, you know, he's worked with seven different head coaches and just the, the emphasis that Coach Rule has had on the classroom and the accountability that mm -hmm. he has put in place. And he, he's even challenged... Dennis, and then just in turn seeing the numbers that have paid off about, I think, what, what did he say, over 60% improved their GPA and just the buy-in that he's seen. So, so we talk about the buy-in on the football field. But obviously with this coaching staff, it's going to be about more than just what you do on a football field. It's, it's everything that you do. You better do it to the best of your ability. And so the fact that you can see that buy-in even in the classroom as well is, is huge too. Yeah, and don't take this on a knock on the old staff, but yeah. leaders lead. Leaders lead, and you watch your leader, and your head coach is your leader, and that it, it funnels everything starts with him, and it all funnels down from there to his staff, 
to his staff, to his players. And then, like, so if you're watching your coach sit in the academics guy's office, which I watch Coach Pelini do quite often. I'd walk by for lunch, and Bo was sitting there talking to Dennis, right? And you know those two are working hand in hand. And it goes back to like we talked about yesterday. It seems like everyone on this staff, everyone in, from academics, nutrition, to strength conditioning, to coaches is all on the same page which is all about making the students better, whether it's in the, whatever field they're in, right? Making them better. So if it's academics, making sure they're getting better in academics. If it's strength and conditioning, getting better in strength and conditioning. And so to have your leader be there and lead that way, it's just going to be natural that everyone falls in line and does it. Or if you don't, then get out of here, right? I mean, and you've seen a few of those guys that didn't like it and they're out. But that's okay because you got to set the standard and then hold everyone to it. So that was not the full conversation I had with Dennis LeBlanc because I had to cut it down because Searles needed more talk time while Obviously. he was here in studio. But one of the things that he said was how big Garrett McGuire was and mm -hmm. helping Xavier through those 21 hours and just that any time that phone call was needed and he Garrett would be out recruiting he'd pick up the phone call what do we got to do it was just it was um and and Xavier told me that about how it took everybody because it was it was a really hard thing and and everybody everybody helped him in such a tremendous way and so you're seeing that from coach rule but then again the guys underneath him are falling in line just like we we've, we've seen time and time again throughout these last few months yeah it's great I love it I love where we're headed I love the culture that's being set around here I just I'm all I'm all in now it's just time to go win games right we've done all the right things we've said all the right things we've the off season's been great but now it's just time to go put all that into play in September you know I don't think I told you this last night when we brought up Gabe Eichert who is the guy that you knew from that I knew from Oklahoma that I worked with at OU that you played with somewhere or whatever and you guys are buddies yep. but anyways immediately when Matt Rule was hired he texted me said what a great hire you're gonna love him he's one of my favorite coaches yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even think he played for him, but he's one of his favorite, like, just what he saw, what he did at Baylor. Yeah, I mean, I pinged a few guys at Carolina, and they all said they really loved his, the way he went about things, the way he handled things. Obviously, he didn't work out on the field for him there, but no one had a bad thing to say about his coaching style and how he liked to run his program. All right, well, we got to get to our final break and our final segment right here on Sports Nightly. Keep it here. We're back to wrap up the show coming up right after this. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt the strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy, the shake up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raised local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. Hy-Vee makes grocery shopping easy with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. Just order online, schedule a pickup or delivery time, then leave the shopping to us. Download the hy V app or go to HyVEislesOnline.com. It's easy to create and save grocery lists, shop the sales, and get fuel savers. Plus, with hy V Isles Online, pickup is free on orders over $24.95, and delivery is free with the hy V Plus membership. Save time, shop online with hy V Isles Online. If unwanted hair is putting you in a prickly situation, give laser hair removal a try. Milan Laser Hair Removal delivers smooth, hair-free skin with permanent results for men and women of all skin tones. So there's no more unwanted stubble, razor burn, or ingrown hairs. Visit any of Milan Laser's seven Nebraska locations to get one free treatment. Ready to never shave again? Call 833-NO-RAZOR or visit MilanLaser.com to book your free treatment and consultation. That's MilanLaser.com. Only in Nebraska will you find a historic, record-breaking event like Nebraska Volleyball Day to honor women's athletics. The University of Nebraska Foundation invites you to be a part of Only in Nebraska, a campaign for our university's future. Another historic, record-breaking effort to engage 150,000 donors to build the future Nebraska needs right now. It's all possible, and it's all happening here, Only in Nebraska. Give to support in you at onlyinnebraska.org. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. 
If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever so loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go with the free FNBO Husker Visa debit card. Fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. The Sports Alley Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Did get a couple of texts. Wanted to get to that we hadn't had a chance to get to. Red from Alliance said, we need Jeremiah to join the Sports Nightly roster permanently. I agree. We need hey, to get you in this permanent rotation. Anytime. You know that. Just I'm, I'm a phone call away. And especially we can do it from the house now, too. I can just, I got the whole stream set up down in the basement and the lair. We're good. We will start the pod up soon, too. Yes. Which, Cyril's will be back on Friday night, too, um, for yes. the Friday party show. But we'll have the podcast rolling, too. And he'll be around. He'll be around more. But, yes. From here on out, in no solo shows. That's what I vote for. No solo <laughs> shows. Searles can step in, whether it's me or Greg gone. Okay, so also had a question here and um, asking about, let's see here if I can get it pulled up. Jeremiah, with Rule and the other coaches wanting the team to represent the university in the state, what are your thoughts on maybe having Terrence Crawford walk out with the team during a game? Uh, yeah. I love Bud Crawford. I think he's, I mean, he's going to go down as obviously pound for pound, but that's just, it's two apples and oranges. I don't think game day is a sacred time. Yeah. Game day is a sacred time. It is what you've worked for. You only get 12 of them a year. No distractions needed. Time to get locked in. Time to get ready to go. Do I think it'd be great to have him at a game? Yes. Have him at Pump get, up during the quarter. Yeah, get him honored like they do at games. But walking out of the tunnel is a privilege that you get to earn the right of to play here at Nebraska. Not something I think you just throw someone in there to walk out pregame with. I also think, too, it should be, and this is just my opinion, that it should be sticking with the team that's yeah. playing, yeah, too. That, that you know, that's their thing. Yeah, don't. It's a distraction. It, it, it may be a good distraction, but at the end of the day, it is a distraction. There's lots of other times to yeah, honor. There's plenty of times to honor him. There's plenty of times to have him back. Let him come speak to the team, all four. But game day is a sacred thing for players. I thought it was hilarious at the spring game. Coach Rule didn't even want to be the first one out. He pushed the O-line out yeah, first. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the other big debate that we've gotten into a few times, and so we just have a minute left, we might have to carry this over into Friday, is changing the walkout song. And it's mm -mm. pretty split. You say no, mm -mm, no mm -mm, way. Mm -mm, can't do it. I don't you know. Don't, you don't want to change the tunnel walk song. I don't. I mean, it's still, to this day, if you were to play the tunnel walk song right now, like the, hairs, the hair the hair on the back of my neck would stand up. My heart rate would die, like, raising. Like, it's just, it's iconic. Yeah. It is iconic. I just, you can, you can mess with it. Maybe you can throw a little, little mix in there or whatever, but you got to have the OG part in there. You just, you can't just go completely away from it. A couple times that that's been brought up, I mean, the text line has lit up. And I've asked a couple of the players that. I even asked Gabe Irvin that, and he doesn't want to touch it either. No. It's just, so even if you're talking about old school, new school, that's something that transcends. And, yes. and these current players. That is legacy. Does not, they do not seem to want it to change. No, that's legacy. I mean, that's, that's iconic. That's, that'd be like going down to Death Valley and changing something. Going to, it, it's a staple. It's a staple of a blue blood program. And no, don't change it. The old man in me doesn't want to change. Well, I'm sure we'll have some text rolling in for that one. Um, On here. Friday. Over the next uh, couple of minutes and into the night. But yeah, you will be back on Friday. Yes. So we will have a Friday party show, winners and losers. If there's something you want us to get into, uh, let us know. And we will dive into all of that on Friday night as Searles will be back in studio. And John Baylor, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend, will be in studio tomorrow night. We'll talk all things Husker volleyball and who knows what else with John Baylor. Baylor. Jeremiah, thanks for your time. Absolutely. I'll see you guys Friday. Thanks to David, Camden, and Cole. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hy-Vee makes grocery shopping easy with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. Just order online, schedule a pickup or delivery time, then leave the shopping to us. Download the Hy-Vee app or go to hyveealesonline.com. It's easy to create and save grocery lists, shop the sales, and get fuel savers. Plus, with Hy-Vee Aisles Online, pickup is free on orders over $24.95, and delivery is free with the Hy-Vee Plus membership. Save time, shop online with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. 
There's a new kind of season ticket when you fly from the Lincoln Airport, the official airport of the Huskers. Now at LNK, choose from fast, affordable, non-stop flights to your favorite vacation spots. All from an airport that's relaxed and hassle-free. It's never been easier to get off the bench and enjoy an adventure with the whole family. Visit GoFlyLNK.com and book your trip today. Let's go. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe. I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knucklehead. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200.